Minister Freeland, how do you feel about some of your colleagues believing you should be shuffled out of the finance portfolio in order to signal a major new direction for the government? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I absolutely take the point of view of our caucus, of my caucus colleagues, really, really seriously. Our government is our caucus, and our government's policies need to be based on conversations within caucus. No, with Canadians. For me, my focus is on working hard to deliver for Canadians every single day. It is on housing, building more homes faster, and putting in place measures like the 30-year mortgage amortization to Which is make whole. it possible for young Canadians to buy their first home. It's focused on making life more affordable with programs like our national system of early learning and child care and dental care. And it is focused on economic growth with programs like our support for AI, our support for R&D with a $5 billion investment in universities and postgrads. So that's where my focus is. It's on Canada and Canadians and working hard with all my caucus colleagues to deliver that. That was the most bullcrap answer. Are comfortable keeping your job as finance minister? <laughs> I feel I have the support I need to do my job and to focus on what my job is, which is delivering for Canada and Canadians. Give, delivering us a pile of crap. Sorry, Jamie. Uh, if I may, I am one of those caucus colleagues, so I'm happy to address this issue. Like I'm, we're standing in Toronto. Uh, we're in a hockey town. It's the off season. So what do people do? They spend all their time um, speculating on whether John Tavares or Austin Matthews should be the number one center. The focus we have is on the team, and I can tell you, I talk to my caucus colleagues every single day, and we have complete confidence in Christian Freeland as a finance minister. <laughs> you know, so this, these whispers in the shadows, and that's what they are, um, take them for what they're worth. It's like listening to talk radio, sports radio. You've got all kinds of interesting ideas, but look, we are a team as a caucus, and you know what that means? It means we talk to each other, we work together, we uh, throw around ideas. But I can tell you unequivocally, we are united behind this person beside me. Christopher Freeland has done a great job, and there isn't a single person in my caucus who would uh, say anything to the uh, contrary. There has been. Next there has question. been many people saying. M.A. Look, Bloomberg News. The Bank of Canada has begun to shift its policy toward avoiding a recession as consumer spending is weak and the unemployment rate has grown a full percentage point in a year. What is your response to the central bank's growing concerns about Canada's economic performance? Yeah, uh, thanks for the question. She has a stool. Um, <laughs> she as I said in my remarks, we as a government really recognize the pressures that Canadians are facing. We recognize the pressure that high inflation put on Canadians, on Canadian families, and we recognize the pressure that Canadians have been facing from high interest rates. And that's why a central element of our government's economic policy has been about putting policies in place that create the conditions that allow inflation to go down so that interest rates can come down to lift that pressure off of Canadians and Canadian families. It's been good news for Canada and Canadians that inflation has been within the Bank of Canada's target range for six months in a row. And Canada last week became the, sec the first economy in the G7 to lower interest rates for the second time, having been the first economy in the G7 to lower rates for the first time. I was out knocking on doors in my own riding yesterday, and one of the things I heard from people was that high interest rates have been really um, a pressure and a concern for them. I heard from people who have a house who have a mortgage renewal coming up. Um, they were a very, very aware that interest rates had come down last week 
and they told me that that was a relief for them. Thank you. There are a lot of condos on the market and overall housing development is still not running at a level the the, the, that the country needs. Um, it's, is it time for the government to rethink its ban on foreign home buyers to bring more capital into the sector? No. 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 Uh, That's a dumb question. What we are focused on is homes for Canadians to live in. It a real challenge for Canada has been housing becoming a speculative financial asset rather than what these homes are here. Places for people to live, for people to build a life, for people to build a family. And that's why our focus is on two things. One is making supply, life shit. Supply, supply. And getting you're not getting any supply out. Faster. You heard Jamie talking about how in 2018 there was nothing here, and now we see a great community and more homes coming soon. And our second focus is on being sure spend, that spend, spend. young Canadians who want to buy a home have the tools that allow them to afford it. So that's why I'm really here emphasizing the 30-year mortgage amortization. Which is horrible. Nobody wants a 30-year mortgage. It makes the house cost more. Good morning, Minister. Thank you for your time. What kind of finance did you do? do think, where did you go to school? Just answering our questions in both English and French. That'd be great. Thank you. Um, does Canada accept the results of the election in Venezuela? And uh, if not, what is Canada going to do about it? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, Canada, like many of our other allies, like many of the world's democracies, has serious concerns about the election in Venezuela. And we're working closely with our partners. She doesn't know shit. I do want to take a moment <laughs> to really voice my support for the brave people of Venezuela, the brave democracy leaders of Venezuela. Um, it takes real courage to stand up for democracy in the face of an authoritarian regime. Millions of people in Venezuela have been doing that, and I want them to know that Canada recognizes their courage and determination. And Canada has been supporting the democratic opposition and condemning an increasingly severe authoritarian regime in Venezuela for many years now. I want the people of Venezuela, the Democrats of Venezuela, to know that Canada stands with them and recognizes that they are fighting hard for democracy and freedom, and they deserve it, just as all of us do.